Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and welcome to Is It Worth It, a sort of buyer's guide first impressions critique series that I haven't actually done on my channel for a very long time. The reason for that was I sort of fell into a more punditry and commentary role on my channel, but the start of my channel was very much games critique focused with only occasional commentary, and somehow over the years that sort of flipped. Not that that's a bad thing, but games critique is definitely something I miss, and so I decided to shake a bit of the old rust loose and talk about a game that I'm actually a bit excited about, Between the Stars. Now, in the past, I would have recorded these in a sort of raw, live format, but I think my first couple of outings diving back into this, I'll focus more on an out-of-band recording where I can still have bullet points up in front of me to help keep me from getting distracted or sidetracked too much with the actual gameplay. Plus, I think keeping the flow of the video a bit tighter and more focused will lead to a better experience for you lot as opposed to me fumbling around like an idiot. As always, we'll dive in and take a look at the options menu first. I like to do this because it's usually a good indicator of the level of effort you can expect from the rest of the game. A robust options menu tells us a lot about the level of caring and the attention to detail the developers have, and in this case, yeah, the options menu is not too bad. It does have all of your standard video settings without too much being missing. The audio has music and sound effects, however, there is voice acting in here, so I would hope for their also adding a voice slider to this, but we'll see. And the control schemes, they do have both keyboard and mouse support, along with controller support with fully rebindable keys and controls. I do have to say, though, the default control scheme is pretty intuitive and easy to use with your standard WASDA for directional movement and Q&E to roll your ship. Between the Stars is a demo version right now, but it does plan on launching in early access tomorrow. It is your standard, or what I think to be standard, space sim RPG that reminds me very much of what you would get if you combine Rebel Galaxy's sort of heavy cruiser battle-style gameplay and put it into a full three-dimensional movement environment along with the open area sectors with a ton of different things to do like you would get with Freelancer. You'll notice the UI elements down in the lower corners of the screen. Now, these are admittedly a bit simplistic, but I think they're functional enough. On the lower left, you have your shield status and hull integrity, which a couple of design element changes can be helpful there, as while it does have a graphical representation, the white on green for the hull is a bit difficult to read. Now, right next to that is the bank of special abilities that your ship currently has that you gain through different types of installed equipment that we'll get into in just a moment. Now, some of those abilities include rapid-fire weapon burst, cloaking, nuclear missiles, mines, EMP bursts, and flak to name but a few, and I'm sure that once the game is further along in development, there will be a good variety of special equipment there. Now, the game mechanics themselves are, again, pretty standard. We have the mouse wheel to control your throttle that increases or decreases in increments of 25% with two more settings for reverse, which will be indicated as your current power level in the lower right which I actually do hope they rename that. Uh, initially, I had thought that was the remaining power that I had, and it was sort of a point distribution system where you could keep power in reserve for redistribution, but no, it was just a throttle. I know a bit of a silly dirt moment on my part, but hey, we all get them from time to time. So you control your ship's direction and attitude with WASDA keys as well as the Q and E to roll the ship. Then in addition to that, your targeting reticle is controlled by your mouse, which is pretty straightforward. Now, you do have a right click to zoom or focus with your targeting reticle. This is important to remember. The reason why is mainly when you are focused, that triggers your ship to initiate a scan when you keep your reticle on your target. If it is scanning an enemy ship, it will detect and highlight the ship's weak point, which will be one of three basic zones, for mid and aft. Then, focusing your fire on that ship's weak point will net you increased hull damage, allowing you to take them out more rapidly than you otherwise might have been able to do so. This is also where I ran into a bit of an issue with the combat that I hope the developers resolve before the game is finished, because while you have the four shield zones, even when you are presenting, say, your port side to an enemy ship, I've noticed that they are still quite easily able to fire into your forward or rear shield. This makes things rather difficult to attempt to position your ship to minimize damage, but I also noticed the same shortcoming on the enemy vessels as well, where I was still quite easily able to pummel a zone with no shields even though a different zone was being presented to me. I suppose it does sort of balance out a bit given it's a sauce for the goose sauce for the gander sort of scenario, but it wasn't at all what I was expecting and it did make combat a little bit more difficult. Now you do have a star map to be able to navigate between different systems, however as this is the demo there was only the one system available with the second system being the final mission. Also the star map itself was a bit small, so I'm hoping that they expand upon that a bit as while these are all different systems, perhaps jump gating to other sectors or some such could be added into broaden the content like what we saw with both Freelancer and Rebel Galaxy. 
And the reason I say that is I actually have really enjoyed the demo. It's not the tightest, most well-refined space sim RPG game that I've ever played, but it is still quite good, and I do want to play more of it. It's not bad at all. When you are in system and you do have to get around from place to place fairly quickly, you press the G key to spin up your, for no better way to put it, cruise engines or warp drive of a sort. This did bring up a couple of notable lapses with the game that I feel should really be included. First of all, while the game does have directional arrows to point you towards objective points when they're off screen, a radar display would be helpful, especially for combat, and also a system map with waypoint selection capabilities would also be extremely helpful and would actually allow the developers to add in some flavor to the different areas with derelict ships, mining facilities, and all sorts of possibilities can be opened up there. I don't know if they will actually include that again, this is just the demo that they created for their Kickstarter, so they could very well already have that in the early access release. We'll see, and I'll probably do an updated video somewhere down the line with this game. Now, I say that as I'm being more hopeful than anything else. This game is being developed on a bit of a shoestring budget, as it was kickstarted for €37,600, or a little over $42,000. This isn't exactly the biggest budget to start with, but I think, hopefully, the game's early access will go well and net them some additional revenue to be able to do more with the game. There are some additional game mechanics that I think bear mentioning here. First is, you do have crew in this game that I'm guessing you can acquire more of as you progress through the game. Each one of them comes with their own unique talents and their own abilities that give you both greater chances of success at the game's minigame that I'll talk about in just a second, as well as passive bonuses for your ship that can include bonuses to weapons, shields, engines, power generation, or increased efficiency of one of your ship's stations. These crew also acquire experience as well and can gain additional points that you can then spend on progressing skill, which I think is a fantastic way to allow for crew customization and specialization, and it really adds value as it makes your crew something more than simple expendable resources. A properly leveled up crew could become devastatingly effective and as such the player might be more careful about risking their lives or waiting for their injuries to be healed before heading back out again. Now along with the crew are the crew stations, which you can see here. You have engineering, which allows you to craft different types of various weapons and ship components that you can also unlock more powerful variants of, I'm guessing as the game progresses. These are done through blueprints that, once you come into the possession of, can be researched at your research station. You also have the scrap station, which will allow you to disassemble various components for resources. That one's pretty self-explanatory, I think, as each component and component type takes different types of resources to be able to create. And there is also the sick bay, where you will need to heal injured party members. Now, your party members can be injured one of two ways from what I've seen. The first is, naturally, through ship combat. And the second is through an interesting little add-on to the game, the narrative minigame that you'll find on certain missions. This minigame acts as a small choose-your-own-adventure that will invariably come to a decision that has to be made that it might include the use of either your captain's skill or the skill of your crew. And the more experienced they are, the better their chances for success, and they accomplish this through a literal roll of the dice. The game actually brings up a dice tray with the number of dice available to you through both your captain's skill and the number and skill of your ship's crew for the pertinent task. The task on your screen now requires a roll of 8 or higher, and given the expertise of my two scientists, I get three 10-sided dice to roll to attempt to succeed. I thought that was a bit of an interesting inclusion, and I really enjoyed it. Although, while the normal game is voice acted, I would hope that they transition these to include even more options in voice acting as well. The story, well, at least for the demo of the game, was about what you could expect with a bit of betrayal and war, and I don't really want to go into too much detail here as I would recommend you actually give it a bash for yourself. It does serve as a prologue for what will be the main game and lines you up with at least a brief glimpse of the lore of the universe in which you'll find yourself and it was simple, but interesting, I think. The voice acting wasn't top tier, but it wasn't exactly what I would call terrible either. Some moments were sort of bland, while others I found to be very gripping, and it pulled me into the story a bit. So, all in all, I think this was a fantastic prologue, and I chose this game demo to break some of the rust loose, as it were, because of a couple of reasons. The first is that you can all go try it for free right now, and the second is... I really liked the demo, and the early access starts tomorrow, so I thought I would help raise a bit of awareness, that way people can try the demo for themselves, and if they like it, maybe consider hitting up the early access. The developers have a lot of work to do from what it seems, but the core elements that I'm seeing here with this demo are extremely encouraging, and I really can't wait to see more. 
So this has been the demo of Between the Stars by Isolated Games, a fun little space sim RPG that's right up my alley. It has a planned release in early access tomorrow, the 28th, and I will definitely be keeping my eye on this one. A link for the game's Steam store page will be in the description below. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.